Okay, now for the challenge problem. This is the fun part. So I measured my launch velocity and I got 3.26 meters per second. I want to shoot the ball at a 65 degree angle and I want to put a basket right there so that it lands. And the question is, how far away does that basket need to be? And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so remember in projectile motion, we have... So I'm going to have the... Uh, I've, I've already picked the angle theta is 65 degrees. H is 0.4 meters. That's the height of, of the basketball goal above the launching point. I just picked a number. Okay. So remember in projectile motion, we have two problems. We have the X motion. And then we have the Y motion. Now what connects those two things together is time. Whatever time it takes to move in the X direction is the same time it takes to move in the Y direction. So if I find the time from one of these motions, I can use it in the other motion. The other important thing is that while the ball is in the air, the only force on it is the gravitational force pulling down. So this means that there is a acceleration in the vertical direction of negative 9.8 meters per second squared and the constant velocity, no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So in the x direction, if I call this my origin so that it starts at x equals zero, then I have this equation. x final is x initial plus vx initial times delta t, I'm, or t. I'm starting at t equals zero. So my x velocity, since I'm shooting the ball at an angle, here's the velocity, there's the angle theta, this is my vx0, this is my vy0. So that's the adjacent side of the triangle, so vx0 equals v0 cosine theta. Because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I get vx0 divided by v0, and I can solve for vx0. So that's really all I know in the x direction. I want to find x. I know that's zero. I know the value for this, but I don't know time. So I need to find the time, and then I can use that in the x motion to find out where to put the thing. So let's look at the y motion. So in the y direction, again, it starts from rest. I mean, it starts from y equals zero, but it does not start with an initial velocity of zero. So in the y direction, I have this equation. The final y is the initial y plus v y zero t minus one half g t squared. So since the ball is accelerating vertically, I do have this extra acceleration term in my kinematic equation. So I know the final y, it's going to be 0.4, the initial y is zero. I know the initial y velocity is going to be, I have the opposite side of that triangle, so it's going to be v zero sine of theta, uh, I don't know t. So let's just put in the values for everything that we know. So I know the final y, I'm just going to put that as h equals 0 plus v0 sine theta t minus 1 half g t squared. Now I'm going to just rearrange, I'm going to subtract h from both sides and I get 0 plus negative h plus v0 sine theta t minus one half g t squared. Now, I do know h. I know a number for this because I know theta and I know v0. I know g is 9.8. 9.8 meters per second squared. And I know one half is one half. So I know all those terms in front of the t, the constant term, the term in front of t, and the term in front of t squared. So how do you solve an equation like that? Well you have to use a quadratic equation. So if I call this A, I call this B, I call that C, then T is going to be negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC, all that over 2A. That's a quadratic equation. I know these A, B, and C terms, so I just plug it in. But I'm going to get two, two answers because I plus or minus, so I have to do it twice. So I'm going to do it first with the plus, and then I'm going to do it with the minus. Okay, so I know all my values. It's a little complicated putting it in. Uh, you have you know a lot of punching in the calculator to do. I actually did it on Python, and just because it's easier to type an equation. 
Uh, and I got the two values for time. Let me write, let me, I'm gonna look, I'm just going right here. I'm gonna look. I'm still here. The two values for time are 0 0.205 seconds and T2 0.397, 0 0.398, 0 0.398 seconds. They're both under a, a second, which makes sense. I mean, these things aren't going that fast. So in the air, it won't be that long. But which one do I use? Well, mathematically, we're trying to find out, here's a parabola for position in the vertical direction versus time. And it looks very similar to that. That's actually trajectory. But we're saying, when is the ball at y equals 0.4? And there's two instances. Here's there and there. So this is going to be the first time, and that's going to be the second time. So if I use this first time, I would get the position for the ball to go through, up through the hoop. And if I use the second one, it'd be coming back down through the hoop. So I'm going to use the second one. I want it to come back down through the hoop. So I'm going to use this time. I'm going to plug it into this equation. So x equals v0, 3.26 meters per second, times the cosine of 65 degrees, times t2 of 0.3. That's a different thing. And if I do that, I get x equals, again, I already cheated, 0.548. Okay, let's see if we're right. What do you think? Okay, first, I'm gonna put on my goggles. Okay, now let's turn over here. I have it set up, turn down here. Okay, so here's my launcher. I have it at 65 degree angle. And let's see. Here is my basket. It's a little ring. And I put this tissue over it just so we can see if it goes through because otherwise it's kind of hard to see. So I've already measured this out because I didn't want to do it beforehand. So the first distance is from here up is 0.4 meters. And from here to there is that 0.548 meters. Do you think it's going to do it? You know I already tested it, but, and I've already locked, locked it back, so let me stand over here so you can see everything. Here we go. I'm kind of scared. Boom. Nailed it.